Hey guys, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be updated every time I make a new video. Thanks, let's begin. Are they sea vampires or trash bags with teeth? of the Bering Sea. This is the 2013 sea monster horror movie from director Donnie Fontleroy, who also directed Anaconda 3 and 4 and Snake of the Swamp. Make sure to check out my previous review for Frankenfish. Uh, the link will be up here in the corner somewhere, and let's begin. The plot. So, a team who are basically diving for gold, discover a nest of sea vampires when they're trudging up dirt. They want to suck this town dry, and uh, now it's up to the people who unleashed them to stop them, basically. There is some rivalry between everybody, but yeah, let's get into the rest of the movie. <laughs> so basically, this is a movie that follows a family that are trying to get the gold from sea monsters that they disturb. A drama horror, if you will. There's also a marine biologist in there, and some enemy gold diggers. However, they insert most of the character development in the third act, and it came off really forced. Like, they're in the middle of trying to watch out for these creatures, let's talk about your past. For the characters, we have Donna Hunter, played by Cassandra Squarebo. Or, uh, Cassie Squarebo. You know, from the Sharknado franchise. She was Nova. And, and Sharknado was big around at this time, so getting her in this movie was probably an A-plus seal of approval. It's a wiener! Owen Powers, played by Brandon Beamer. Yeah, that's how you say it. Is, uh... Well, he's the new grunt of the group. He's a newbie. And everyone kind of gives him crap for it, which is actually the most realistic thing in this movie. You have all these characters like, he's not gonna, he's gonna sell us out, he's not gonna pull his own weight, and he proves him wrong over and over again. Then we have Megan Arthur, played by Jacqueline Fleming, who, according to the back cover of the DVD, she was an Abraham Lincoln vampire hunter. Anyway, she wants to get to the bottom of this whole sea vampire, killing off divers and civilians thing going on, and she's very fascinated by these creatures. Naturally, she's a scientist. Then we have Joe Hunter, played by Jonathan Lipnicki. Lipnicki. Who was actually the main kid in Stuart Little 1 and 2. I did not see that coming when I looked it up. I was like, what? Yeah, he's in this movie. He's the younger brother who is really annoying and always trying to get the best of his sister. Trying to best her and everything. And he's a douche. Damn sea vampires. Then there is Glenn Hunter, who is the father of the family. He's played by the late Kevin Dobson. So he passed recently. Not, like, super recently, but still sad. Then there's Thorn, played by Lawrence Turner, who is the arch-rival THORN of uh, most of the gold diggers. He is the richest, the... calmest? Unless he sees the sea vampires, he's like, THEY DO EXIST! The film itself isn't anything special to look at. There are some shots of stock footage of Alaska. However, the film was shot in Louisiana. I think they do a decent job covering up where it was filmed, but not that great. You can tell some of it's in Louisiana. Shockingly, I know. The gore, the effects, we get some bloody feedings, a chest bursting scene right out of Alien. <laughs> and a lot of blood spray via blown-up sea vampires. I do like that they treat the sea vampires with some actual vampiric lore. Sunlight hurts them, as does staking. I don't like the CGI in this movie, it's pretty piss poor. The design of the creatures is a cool one though. They add to some concept art and it looks really awesome. But I don't think they move fluid enough to have any grace to them, they're very stiff. They're sort of static, not even able to bend. They're like, I can't see my balls. 
I got an itch and I can't get it. The motion picture soundtrack, there is some forgettable stuff. Generic adventure and detention music. However, there are either some synth or electric guitar sections that are awesome. I was like, where's this been the whole movie? It's really helped to enhance certain scenes. Andrew Morgan Smith composed this movie's score, as well as some others of note such as Swamp Shark, Arachnoquake, Flying Monkeys, Ghost Shark, Raging Cajun Redneck Gators, Jeepers Creepers 3, and many others. This, overall, is a pretty forgettable watch. It's nothing all that engaging, it really could have been, and the monsters needed more work. I feel this and Snakehead of Swamp had a lot of potential with their creature designs, however the budget just wasn't there. It kind of affects the movie in a big way, you know? The characters are a bit too forced with their stories, and the pacing is a bit wonky. You think you're at the climax, but then find out you're almost three quarters of the way through. Still, I liked most of the music, some of the gore was okay, the vampire lore was a fitting inclusion, and the cinematography was good at disguising its location. The actual location that it was shot in. Overall, I give... Beast of the Bering Sea, aka Bering Sea Beast, aka Damn Sea Vampires, a 1.5. Thank you all for watching, and Lie and Brian Gatto, the horror show host. Make sure to like, comment on, as well as share this video. Like my Facebook fan page and support me on Patreon, where even a dollar a month will help keep this channel going on strong, and I'd greatly appreciate it. Plus, you'll get access to body counts and other music videos that you can't get on YouTube because of copyright and age restriction. If you don't want to support the Patreon for a monthly subscription, you can always donate to me to my PayPal, which you can find the link to in the description below. It is horrorshow37 at gmail.com. Any contribution helps, and I'd greatly appreciate it. Also, hit that notification bell to be notified every time I make a new video, and as always, subscribe!